Bhagavad Gita, verse 36. O Madhava, sin will take shelter of us because of killing all these aggressors. Therefore, it is improper to kill Duryodhana and our other relatives. How can we be happy by slaying our own kinsmen? Sar Ardavarshini According to the scriptures, there are six types of aggressors. First, those who set fire to one's house. Second, those who give poison. Third, those who attack with deadly weapons. Fourth, those who steal one's wealth. Fifth, those who usurp one's land. And sixth, those who abduct one's wife. Arjuna argues, you may say, O Bharata, immediately upon seeing these six types of aggressors, one should kill them without consideration, because according to the injunctions of scripture, such killing is proper and no sin is incurred. In reply, I would say, by killing those assembled here, we will certainly incur sin. There is a reason behind Arjuna's logic. According to Arta Shastra, scriptures on the science of political economy, it is proper to kill an aggressor. The injunctions of Arta Shastra, however, are less important than Dharma Shastra, the injunctions of the scriptures and proper codes of conduct. As Yajnavalkya Rishi states, no Dharma Shastra to be superior to Arta Shastra. For this reason, Arjuna said, according to the scriptures on morality, we will certainly incur sin by killing Acharyas and others. Furthermore, we will not even derive any mundane pleasure from it. For this reason, Arjuna is using phrases such as Svagyanam, which means one's own relatives. Sar Ardavarshini Prakashika Vriti According to the Smritis, the supplementary Vedic literatures, no sin is incurred by killing six types of aggressors. But by the statement of the Shrutis, which were directly manifest from the Supreme Lord, which have been heard from authorities, the injunctions to not kill any living entity is established. Ma himsyat sarva bhutani. Whenever there seems to be a contradiction between Shruti and Smriti, the statements of Shruti are accepted as superior. This is the instruction of the scripture. Similarly, the path provided by scriptures on proper codes of conduct, Dharma Shastra, should be considered superior to scriptures on the science of political economy, Arta Shastra. By following this logic, Arjuna feels that although the sons of Dhritarashtra are the aggressors, sin will be incurred by killing them. Here, we also see another speciality in the character of Arjuna. At the end of the battle of Mahabharata, Arjuna bound Ashwatthama as one ties up an animal, and for the offense of killing his son and the sons of his brothers, the other Pandavas, he chased him at the feet of his wife Draupadi, who was weeping. Being generous and liberal, he said that Ashwatthama, the son of their guru, should be forgiven. Bhima, on the other hand, said that he should be killed immediately. Arjuna, finding himself in a dilemma, 
looked towards Krishna, who said, A Brahmana is not deserved of the death sentence, even if he has fallen from his status. On the other hand, one who approaches with weapons, with the intention of making a lethal attack, must certainly be killed. Understanding Sri Krishna's inner intention, Arjuna cuts the hair of that unqualified Brahmana, Ashvatthama, forcibly removed the gem from his forehead and expelled him from the camp. The internal feeling of Arjuna is that no one can be happy by engaging in sin, whatever the situation may be. Such a person cannot even receive worldly happiness. What to speak of transcendental pleasure? Adherence to the Vedas, the Smritis, the injunctions of saintly behavior and self-satisfaction are the four characteristics of religiosity. Fighting against one's kinsmen is an activity that is contrary to both the Vedas and saintly behavior and brings with it feelings of guilt.